Hey Miles here at Tactile Hive. If you're a concealed carrier and you're looking for a new holster, this video is going to share 12 things you should consider if you are about to buy a new concealed carry holster. So if you're interested, stay tuned. The 12 points I'm going to discuss are going to be relative to you and what your body type is like, what you're going to be using, how you like to carry, essentially what's comfortable for you. So what I share with you again are just points to think about and they're just, they're not necessarily must do. So you're gonna to have to figure out what works for you. The first, and also there's no particular order. I'm mentioning these points, but they're in random order. Um, the first thing I wanna discuss is concealability. If you are a concealed carry holster, clearly we wanna conceal our firearm arm and so you need to ensure that you get a holster that is tight to your body that is going to actually work with your body type and this is where I mentioned it's relative right because we can't really say which holster is going to be the best for you so one thing you should do and this is one of the reasons why a lot of people have that box of holsters at home is that you have to try lots of different holsters with lots of different features and see what works best for your body type and your carry position if you don't have to buy all these holsters, that's great. Maybe you can ask other people who have a similar holster and then kind of experiment from there. But you really need to try on holsters to see what works for you. If you read a great review, that is a good start. But at the end of the day, what's really going to tell you if it is good for you in terms of concealability is to actually try it on and wear the clothing that you usually wear. The second point to consider is making sure your holster is comfortable, has a comfortable fit. And there are a lot of different features that may actually work for you or not work for you in terms of comfort. For example, in past videos, I'll leave a link to it, I've talked about this uh, body contour or this wedge that for some people who carry appendix, they like this because it actually pushes against their body put, and pushes the grip closer to the body to decrease printing. But some people might not like that. They might not feel that's comfortable and they might want something that has absolutely no wedge at all. So you need to determine what's going to be best for you in terms of how comfortable it is. One thing that I stress, I've been carrying Conceal every day for quite a while now, is you really need to think about, uh, for me, concealability is important, but, but comfortable fit, comfort is, is right there because if you're wearing it all day long and even though it conceals well and it just doesn't feel good, then you're probably not going to carry it a lot or you're just going to hate yourself because every single minute you're, you're wearing or your attention's on that holster. So look for a comfortable fit and it kind of goes with concealability. You have to try lots of different holsters to figure out what's going to work best for you. The third point is retention. And when I talk about retention, I'm referring to how well your gun will be held securely in your holster. And different holsters will have different mechanisms that will allow you to adjust the retention. So I have a dry P365 here. There's nothing in the, the magazine here as well as um, the pistol here. But what we're referring to here is that if this was turned upside down and it was shaken here, does the pistol come out? And some holsters will have a variable retention, some holsters may not. So I, I definitely feel that you should get a concealed carry holster that allows you to adjust that retention. Some of you may want it looser than others, and you also have to think about what you're going to be doing. For example, I really think about grappling and integrative combative, so it's very important for me that this holster is secure if I was on the ground or anything like that, moving around. Other people, they like it loose because they want to make sure they, perhaps it's just their, their style, they want it loose so they can get a fast draw. But consider that, I do recommend once again trying to get a holster that has, uh, that has adjustments for the retention level. The fourth point is trigger coverage. Every holster should be a safe holster in the sense that if you have your gun in that holster, you shouldn't have to worry about that gun going off. So you need to cover the trigger. All of these holsters on the table, they all cover the trigger guard here. So there's no way to access that trigger or your clothing or whatever can't get in and accidentally uh, discharge around. So you'll see here, this is all, all of these are covering the trigger. And this is what you want to look for. Now there are some, there are some holster companies, or I should say, clip companies for your holsters where it's literally just a clip that attaches to your gun and it doesn't really cover your trigger guard. That is somewhat controversial. Some people will say that if there's a clip, imagine there's a clip right here on the outside it's attached and you put it, you carry appendix just like this so it's exactly the way you would with a regular holster but the clip is on the outside and that is it. It doesn't cover the trigger guard and it's controversial because some will say that your belt acts as that trigger guard. So it's really up to your wrist tolerance if you like that type 
type of holster or not. I prefer holsters that really cover the trigger guard themselves rather than your belt being the, the trigger guard or I should say covering the trigger guard because to me, I feel that it's still a little loose between the belt and your body and something can get in between shirt, material, whatever it is and you might accidentally discharge around. So make sure that when you buy a holster, it is covering your trigger so that you have no accidental discharges. The fifth point is to think about access and kind of the, your draw stroke. What I mean by that is with your holsters, there are different kinds of holsters. All of these holsters on the table are really good in the sense that they don't have these weird type of shapes that might get in the way of your grip or might get in the way of your draw. I have seen some really crazy concealed carry holsters where there's a lot of different, you know, a lot of material here that sometimes can get in the way of someone gripping and just basically accessing their firearm. This is where one of those, one of the arguments for minimalist concealed carry holsters where if you have too much that can actually affect access and when there's more material too you got to think about defeating your garment is there is there unnecessary material in your holster that might impede your access to the holster let's say when you're defeating a garment the more material you have there could be a potential risk so just consider that you want to make sure that whatever holster you choose you have easy access to your firearm Number six, make sure that the holster you get allows you to get a good master grip uh, or a good purchase on your grip. What do I mean by that? If you have this here in your, on your belt, and I'm going to, I'm showing this outside so you can have a better view here, but let's say this was really low here and my belt is kind of covering the, the grip here, I might not be able to get a good purchase, my, even my fingers around to get that grip. Now it's not necessary to get, be able to get your whole hand, just like this, your whole hand around, even your thumb, because body types are different. You might have to, let's say if you're carrying here, you might have to have your thumb on the back right here of your pistol. And that's okay, but at least you're able to get nice high and tight on the grip and get your other fingers around the grip. And that is what I'm referring to about making sure that you get a holster that allows you to get that good master grip so that you're not fiddling around and God forbid you try to access your weapon and you fumble. So make sure you have a good master grip. Number seven, attachments. We have soft loops here. We have clips right here. We have outside the waistband paddle here. Whatever, whatever type of attachment you use, you need to make sure that it will hold your firearm securely. We've seen many times where a lot of our force and force students, they'll use their own holsters and that holster just comes right out because they have you know, a weak attachment. So the attachment is just as important as your holster because this is the connection between the holster and your body, right? And you want it to be very secure. So not only do you not want your holster to come out when you're drawing or fall out, you also want to make sure that it stays in place. What I mean by that is if you're the type, I'll just use this one since the firearm is here right now, if this is the natural position for me to draw. I'm hypothetically using this where, notice where the grip angle is, and this is exactly how I wanna draw. But maybe the, the attachments aren't strong enough and they begin to move while I'm walking. And maybe I go for my gun right now, and now it's in a different orientation than what I'm used to. So your attachments need to make sure that your holster doesn't come off, but it's also secure in the actual position that you prefer when drawing. The eighth point to consider is pistol and body protection. What do I mean by that? So if you are, let's start off with pistol protection. If you are carrying your firearm and you want to make sure that, you know, you don't get your pistol scratched up, dented, or also anything caught in the trigger guard, you need to make sure that it has full coverage. And, you know, some people, your, your mileage may vary. You might not want everything covered for whatever reason. You want a minimalist holster, whatever it is. But... We're talking about protecting your pistol from nicks, scratches, whatever it is, particularly if it was outside the waistband here, like this paddle holster. And so you want it to be completely covered so that you're protecting your pistol. Body protection has to do with, if you're carrying concealed, right, it's against your body, you want to make sure that you don't get any scrapes. Even when you're practicing, for example, when the gun gets, gets hot, you're not going to be affected by the heat. And this is why sometimes you'll hear about people having sweat guards and things like that. Sweat guards are going to be material in between your body, right, in between your body and the gun itself, right? Sweat guards also obviously are there to actually prevent sweat from getting on your pistol, but also it is about body protection as well in the sense that notice these two holsters here, one of them has a sweat guard that is higher. This is kind of a mid sweat guard here. This one right here, this is an outside the waistband holster, but it has no sweat guard here. It doesn't necessarily need one because it's outside the waistband holster, but I have seen some outside waistband holsters that have sweat guards. So 
they, as I mentioned, they will protect the gun as well. It's pistol protection in the sense that it's protecting the gun from your sweat if you're carrying, let's say, appendix here. But also it is body protection in that if the gun gets hot or you have any stippling or sandpaper grip or whatever, something like that, something on the slide, it can also protect your body. So you want to consider those two things. It's not just about the sweat guard. It's also everything else in the holster here. If you had some, let's say, sharp, sharp front serrations on your pistol, and maybe you had one of those minimalist concealed carry holsters that only block the trigger guard. Now imagine you clip it on, and let's pretend this is exposed, you have sharp serrations here, and every time you reholster, it might not be very comfortable, or when you sit down, you can feel those sharp front serrations. So again, body protection, pistol protection are things you need to consider. The ninth point is to really consider the material of your holster, making sure it's a quality build and then you have an exact fit with your actual pistol. The, the build quality should be self-explanatory. You don't want a holster that's gonna be flimsy, break on you. You want it to be there for a while. And you know, again, you need to be able to trust this because this is gonna be your everyday carry holster. The exact fit is important in the sense that I have seen people carry, so this is not meant for this, but I'm doing it on purpose, where imagine this was a concealed carry holster. There's, it holds it securely because of the retention, but there's a lot of wobble here. And this kind of connects back to when I talked about attachments. You want your attachments to hold the pistol in place in the exact position you're used to with your draw stroke. So if, let's say you had good attachments, but there's all of this movement, it's not an exact fit. When I draw, it might actually change the position. Let's say if I'm used to drawing this way, but the gun tilts this way, even though it's securing the holster, I may not get the exact master grip that I want to. So make sure you look for a quality holster of the material so it's not going to break on you and as well exact fit so the gun is not going to shift. The tenth point is to consider how difficult it might be to reholster. And I say this because everyone's use case is going to be different. So I'm not going to put a blanket statement there that you're never going to have to worry about reholstering quickly or anything like that, right? So it's really up to you. But reholstering is one of the things that you can consider because let's use this holster as an example. It's a outside the waistband concealed carry holster, but it's very easy for me to reholster my gun after I'm using, whether it's training, wh whatever it might be, I can easily look down. There's no stress nothing. There are some concealed carry holsters and clips and things like that where you physically can't do it with one arm. Like you sometimes have to actually unclip the holster from your belt and physically use two hands. So based on your application, is that going to be feasible? I don't know. It's really up to you. So you need to consider how easy it is to reholster. I have also seen some holsters and tried some holsters where you really have to shove that holster in because of the retention as well as because of the design and a combination of that. So just consider that when you're purchasing a concealed carry holster. The 11th point is adjustability. Everything that I have already discussed, if there is a way that you can adjust those features to your liking, that is always going to be best because it'll help you avoid the idea of getting a holster or not knowing it's going to work for you. But if there's a lot of adjustability, then you can tweak things, make micro adjustments to fit your body type and your use case. Let me give you an example here. So some most companies will have a fixed claw something like this and if you don't know what this does um, i'll put a link to a video that i talked about that does discuss the, the claw here but if you have something like this it is going to push against your belt help decrease printing but for some people they might need more adjustments because body types are different right so you might want to look into, let's say Tenacore, I'll leave a link for these guys as well down below in the description. Tenacore is one of the few companies I know that actually allows you to adjust that, uh, that camming bar or the claw so that you have the, the perfect fit for your, your position of carrying your body type. So consider adjustability in everything. We're not just talking about uh, the camming bar, but we're talking about can you can't, can you adjust the ride up and down, everything that I've already discussed. If there's some way that you can adjust the holster to allow you to try and find what's best for that particular point, then you're going to have a lot of flexibility and freedom to really fine tune and get the holster the way you want it. And the last point to consider when purchasing a concealed carry holster is your attire. That is very important because it's gonna also help dictate how concealable things are gonna be, how comfortable things are gonna be. And let's just use an easy example. If you're looking for a outside the waistband concealed carry holster versus appendix, this is where things can change. Where, for example, take a look at this. This is an outside the waistband concealed carry holster. And I'm gonna put this gun here. And you can see that if I always wear t-shirts like this, this really, 
it really doesn't work for me. Even though this is a good concealed carry holster, it's just that for my attire, it doesn't. I kind of wear shirts that are a little bit tighter to the body. If you wear looser shirts, it might work. So you need to consider that. For me, it doesn't because this doesn't work, I would most likely have to use something like this. And this is one of the reasons why I carry appendix because I wear shirts like this and it just disappears. So you need to consider what you typically wear. Now, of course, this does not mean that you can't change holsters depending on the type of attire you're wearing. Like if you're, you're going to a gala or a ball or something like that, you're, you know, you're, wear, you're wearing formal wear, you might not be able to carry how you normally do. So maybe you have a concealed carry holster for those occasions versus let's say your everyday casual wear might be like this, or maybe you wearing flannel or something like that, then just consider that. So those are 12 things to consider when you're buying a concealed carry holster. As always, if you like the video, please give us a thumbs up as well as comment and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.